Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed getting to know each other a little bit. Um, because what is good for the goose is good for the gander. I will also answer some of these questions for you so you can get to know me a little bit. And that way the first time you meet me, you won't be like, who is this weird tiny person who's talking really loudly and shaking her hands at me? Um, like I said, I am Dr. Holly Vaughn and I actually did my undergraduate degree and my master's degree here at the University of North Texas. However, I did not start at the University of North Texas. I started in College Station, Texas and rapidly decided I had no interest in gigging anything ever like gig what, um, and found my way to UNT and found my way to communication studies and really fell in love with communication studies. I like the broad approach to studying all varieties of human communication. I like the ways in which the degree was applicable in multiple areas, um, so much so that I went on to get my PhD um, at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and when I left, I said, I'm never coming back to Texas unless it's to Denton or Austin. And then I came back and got my gig uh, back here at UNT. I've been back for about seven years and I love being being back in Denton and I love being back at the UNT campus. I really do love UNT. I kind of bleed green. I think Denton's a very cool town, especially if you're into arts and culture. It's kind of like a little mini Austin. Um, and so that's what brings me to UNT and communication studies. A wacky fact about me, I am four foot ten and a half, which in the United States is considered kind of freakishly small. But in Portugal, where I am right now, um, I am average. I am absolutely average. I'm actually taller than some people. So that's a wacky fact about me as well. Um, so this is what we're going to get into today is what is communication studies, what does the degree entail, and then what's the structure of the degree. You all have this advising folder in front of you and I'd like you to get it out now so we can go through the papers one or step by step, one by one, right? And so if you'll open up your folder, this is the first little sheet you will see. It has my face, right, my office number right there, and then uh, Brittany Hale, she's another advisor in the department. You'll be working with her once you're past your freshman year. And so if you need to get a hold of me, the best way to do it is to email comadvising at unt.edu and then say, hey, I'm a freshman, Holly's my advisor, I need to schedule an appointment with her. That's kind of the best way for us to get in touch with each other. Make sense? Um, all right, so let's move on to this next sheet right here, which gets into what is communication studies. And so um, when I switched my major from business to communication studies, my parents asked me, what is communication studies? And my smart aleck retort was, well, we study communication, right? <laughs> to which they were none too pleased, um, and rightfully so. And so what is communication studies? I think this is a really good primer of what the discipline is. Um, communication studies is a broad approach to studying all of human communication writ large, right? So there's not much that falls outside of that purview. But specifically, we look at the symbolic processes involved in analyzing ourselves and others using verbal and nonverbal messages, listening and responding, persuading people to do things and performing in a civic manner. In short, we provide the skills re required in the 21st century workplace in the Department of Communication Studies. There's a huge study that's done every year by the National Association of Colleges and Universities and it asks employers who are hiring folks right out of college, what are you looking for? What are the skills you're looking for for somebody coming out of college that makes them hireable? And consistently they say the top things. Number one, good verbal communication skills. Number two, excellent written communication skills. Number three, good intercultural communication skills. Number four, critical thinking skills. And number five, the ability to work well in teams and create content. And inside of communication studies, you will walk out of this degree with all five of those skills. It's very marketable, right? But as I said, communication studies is a broad degree. And so in order to study human communication in a way that's manageable and also marketable, we have to break it down into particular areas or chunks, right? And so there are three major areas inside of the department and you will take classes in all three areas. So if you'll turn to the back side of the sheet, right? We're gonna talk through the different areas on the page. And of course, if you wanna pause the video to read through this a little bit, that's fine. Um, but the first area I'm gonna talk about is actually down here on the bottom, and it's called interpersonal slash organizational slash digital communication. And so interpersonal organizational slash digital communication focuses on interpersonal communication, right? Communication between at least two people. So this looks at different types of relationships, how we manage conflict. It also looks at small group communication, right? How do we work in teams? How do we understand leadership? We look at uh, things like organizational structures. How does corporate communication operate? How do we operate inside of those structures? And we also look at the increasing way digital communication is affecting every aspect of our lives. So that's area number 
number one, IDO or interpersonal slash organizational slash um, digital, sorry. Um, so stuff that kind of yields towards corporate communication or the social sciences is going to be hanging out in this first area, interpersonal slash organizational slash digital, right? IDO, does that make sense? Okay. And so moving on, we're gonna move to the top part of your page, um, which is uh, traditionally the study of rhetoric, right? So communication and public discourse and persuasion is traditionally the study of rhetoric or argumentation, debate, persuasion. Otherwise, um, how do we create messages or craft messages in public that can persuade people to do things they otherwise wouldn't do given the available means of persuasion in any given situation, right? And in turn, how do those big, huge public messages influence who we are as citizens in the world, right? So uh, rhetoric goes back to old dead Greek dudes like Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, um, and you will learn how persuasion operates and how persuasion constitutes subjects in the world. So in rhetoric, you'll take classes that focus in public address. You would also take classes that might focus in visual rhetoric or visual persuasion, as well as things of, like race, class, identity, politics. Our rhetoricians are very busy right now. Um, if you have any sort of eyeball towards law school, rhetoric is probably going to be where you're hanging out, right, or the, the classes that you enjoy. So that's chunk number two, rhetoric, right, or communication, culture, and public discourse. So we got chunk number one. IDO, right, yields towards corporate communication in the social sciences. Chunk number two, rhetoric or public communication and persuasion, right? And then we're going to move to the center part of this page and talk about chunk number three, which is the funky part of the discipline that I hang out in called performance studies. And in performance studies, we study aesthetic communication, right, or communication that is about art or creative content. And so um, we look at all human communication as an act or as an event of performance, right? So right now we are all sitting in the middle of a performance. You are performing a particular role that you have learned how to perform long before you walked into the scene of this classroom, right? I'm saying a script that I've clearly said a thousand times. And so we use performance as a metaphor to investigate all human communication. We also make performance as a tool of persuasion. So we actually have a little black box theater here and we make performances about particular social issues going on at any given time. And so that's area number three, chunk number three, performance studies or studying aesthetic communication or artistic communication, right? So those are the three major areas of the discipline. Interpersonal slash organizational slash digital, right? Or IDO for short. Again, yields towards corporate communication and social sciences. Chunk number two, rhetoric or public communication and persuasion. And then chunk number three, performance studies or aesthetic and artistic communication, right? So you will take classes in all three of those areas to ensure that you have this broad scope of human communication. Make sense? Okay. So moving right along, we're going to get into the brass tacks of how your degree is structured. I want you to pay really close attention here because we try to do a really good job of managing how you structure your degree in order for you to maximize the value of your degree. Okay? And so if you will get out this little packet right here, it says your 2019 undergrad student advising packet. I'm going to walk you through how exactly how the degree works, how it fits in with your core requirements, and how you can maximize the value of this degree. Okay? If you need to pause to take a second and ask questions, that's fine. Nicole, pause whenever you feel like you should. Um, okay, but moving on. So, in terms of getting a communication studies degree, right, the degree is structured like an hourglass. Okay, that's the image I want you to keep in your head. And the first class you will take, we're going to pop right down here, is COM 1010, Introduction to Human Communication, right? That's the intro basic level COM class. That's the base of the hourglass, right? That's your intro class to COM. Everything else is kind of built on top of that, right? So COM 1010. That's your intro class. That's the base of the hourglass. That's essentially the semester long version of those three areas that I just talked about. It gets you into the basic theories and practices involved in all of human communication. Okay. And then from COM 1010, we go to the bottom part of the hourglass. And these are your 2000Z level classes or your prerequisite classes. 
right? So right underneath COM 1010, you'll see another class that's called COM 2020 Interpersonal Communication, okay? This is your basic level class or introductory level class to interpersonal slash organizational slash digital, right? IDO for short. Note that COM 2020 ends in a 20, okay? The numbers are gonna matter. And so anytime you see a COM class that ends in a 20 something, it's gonna be hanging out in the IDO region, right? The interpersonal slash organizational slash digital, right? So COM 2020, your introductory class to, uh, to interpersonal um, and organizational communication, right? The next class on there is gonna be COM 2140, Advocating in Public. This is your basic level class in rhetoric, right? And so note that it ends in a 40. Anytime you see a class that ends in a 40 something, it's going to be hanging out in the rhetoric area. Make sense? Okay, come 2060 is the next class, uh, performance of literature, and this is your basic level class in performance studies, right? So note that it ends in a 60 something. Anytime you see a comm class that ends in a 60 something, it's gonna be hanging out in the performance studies area. All right, so does all that make sense? That's the bottom part of the hourglass. Com 1010, and then your basic class in interpersonal, Com 2020, your basic class in rhetoric, Com 2140, your basic class in uh, performance studies, Com 2060, right? So those are all of your prereq classes. And then you move to the center of the hourglass, or kind of like the waistband of the degree, and this is your Com 3010 semester, okay? And so we're gonna really be diligent about planning all of your classes up to your COM 3010 semester because it's in a really important class or semester in, in the process of, your, uh, of getting your degree. And so COM 3010 is an intense research and writing class that you have to take before you can get to the rest of your upper level classes, right? Um, we've learned through years and years and years of experience that through no fault of your own, most folks are coming to college and even after they've taken English 1 and 2 in college, you still really haven't been taught how to do the type of research and the type of writing that's expected of you in junior and senior level comm classes, right? And so this is the class that teaches you how to do it. It's like spinach. It's good for you. Or um, I think the better analogy, it's kind of like CrossFit for writing, right? It might not feel good necessarily, but it gets really good results. But because COM 3010 is intense and does require a lot of time, um, we structure that semester very carefully. So you are only allowed to take one other COM class concurrently with COM 3010, okay? So that semester you're in 3010, you can only be in one other COM class and then we'll fill the rest of your schedule out with electives or minors or core classes. We'll talk more about this in a second, right? And so for the comm classes, you can be in concurrently with 3010. You can be in either your very last 2000Z level class or one very specific upper level class that the advisors approve of ahead of time, okay? Um, also, again, I'm gonna return to this. You want to save your science classes to take your COM 3010 semester, right? You'll probably be hitting your COM 3010 semester either probably the spring semester of your sophomore year, perhaps a little bit earlier if you're coming in with lots of AP credit, but save your sciences for the COM 3010 semester, and I'll explain a little bit more later, okay? So we've talked about the base of the hourglass, right? The intro classes, COM 3010, the middle of the hourglass, and now we're gonna get to the upper part of the hourglass or your upper level classes, um, and that complete your degree, right? So once you're done with COM 3010, you're done with all your prereqs, sky is the limit, right? And so we've had you take a basic level class in each one of the areas, and now to ensure that you have that breadth of human communication, we're gonna have you take an upper level class in each one of the areas, okay? And so if you'll flip to the second part of this page, right, after all the requirements for COM 3010, you have your group distribution requirements, okay? And so you're required to take a group A or your upper level interpersonal slash organizational slash digital. Any one of these classes will fulfill that requirement, okay? Note that they all end in a 20, right? So group A, interpersonal, organizational, digital, upper level. Group B, that's gonna be your upper level rhetoric class. Any one of these classes will fulfill that requirement. 
and your group C, which is your upper level performance. Any one of these classes will fulfill this requirement, right? So you're looking at nine hours total distributed amongst each one of the areas. Make sense? Okay. And so by the time folks get here, they usually tend to start gravitating towards one or two areas over another, right? Which is great. Um, so for example, when I was taking comm way, way, way back in the cut, um, <laughs> I fell in love with performance studies classes. And so I took all my distribution requirements, but then I really wanted to focus in performance studies. Um, and so I took classes in there. Um, I had a really good friend who really, really liked organizational communication. So she kind of focused in that area after she was done with her distribution, right? And now I'm a professor who teaches about performance studies and has a black box where I make weird performance art sometimes. She's a headhunter for a major corporation, right? We have the same degrees. We put them to use in different ways. Does that make sense? Okay. And so uh, you have, after your distribution hours, you have your first theory requirements. So you have to take a senior level theory, but you can pick the theory that you want to take based on your interests, right? And so look here at the theory classes, COM 4020, that's going to be hanging out in interpersonal organizational digital, right? As opposed to COM 4040 rhetorical theory that's going to be hanging out in rhetoric. So we want to figure out where your interests lie so we can plan towards the theory that you want to take. These aren't all offered every semester, right? So what I don't want to happen is for you to tell me, oh, Holly, I would rather stab myself in the eye than take another rhetoric class. And it's your spring semester of your senior year and rhetorical theory is all that's available, right? Ah, let's not do that. Make sense? So we'll plan towards the theory that you want to take. And then you have nine hours of upper level comm electives, meaning 3,000 or 4,000 level electives, that you can pick whatever you want. Any of the classes from the above list, any of the special topics classes we offer, right? This allows you to go deep into a particular area if you want to, right? Like I did with performance studies or my friend did with organizational communication. But you don't have to. You never have to plant a flag and be like, oh, I'm rhetoric or oh, I'm performance, right? You can be a generalist. You can take any of the classes that you want to. We've just designed the degree in a way to make sure that you get both breadth and depth into a particular area if you want to. Make sense? Okay, so we've talked about exactly how the degree requirements work, right? The bottom part of the hourglass is your prereq classes, 30 tens at the center, and then the upper part of the hourglass are your distribution hours, as well as your theory class and your electives. So that's 36 hours total for the comm degree, okay? And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to keep going, and we're going to talk about exactly the way in which your comm degree fits into your core requirements, all right? as well as your minor requirements. So because COM is so broad, you are required to have a minor, and the minor can only help you. You do not have to know what you want your minor to be today. We will talk about it extensively as time goes on. It is entirely possible, if not probable, that you will have at least two minors just because of the way the degree works, because you have the time to do it. Um, some of the most common minors for comm majors is a marketing minor, because you don't have to take the accounting, a management minor, because you don't have to take the accounting, right, as well as sociology minor, political science minor, um, and so there's a bunch of different minors that we can look at. And so there's also really cool specific minors that you might think, oh, I didn't know I wanted to do this and something exists. So for example, we have a lot of folks who um, are really motivated towards helping out their communities and did a lot of volunteer work. And so they're minoring in leadership and nonprofit organization, which makes all the sense in the world, right? And so as you go through the catalog, look at all those different minors and see what strikes your fancy. We'll find something that works for you, okay? So now we're getting into the core curriculum. Starting here, okay? So. Everybody in the university, regardless of their major, has to take the university core requirements, right? And then, based on your major, you're divided up into different colleges. So, College of Business, College of Hospitality, Tourism, Management, um, College of uh, Visual Art Design, right? And so, each college gets to tack on additional college core requirements to the university core requirements, okay? So communication studies is inside of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences class, we classy, right? Um, and so we'll talk about the core requirements and the college requirements as well, okay? So first off, starting off with the university core, you have to take your English Composition 1, English Composition 2. For comm, you have to make at least a C in both of those classes. You also have to take these classes before your 3010 semester, okay? And then, if you'll look down here, 
you have to take a creative arts requirement. Note right here that COM 2060, Performance of Literature, right, it's highlighted right there, also meets your creative, uh, your creative arts requirement so you get to double dip. Okay, so it's not like you get six hours for a three hour class, that one class checks two boxes, which gives you the bandwidth to do additional stuff later, right? Look down here, social and behavioral science requirement. That's the next one up. COM 2020, interpersonal communication. Also meets your social and behavioral science requirement. So you get to double dip there, right? You have these categories one and categories two. COM 1010, face the hourglass, and COM 2140, advocating in public, also meet those requirements. So you automatically knock out 12 hours of your core just by being a comm major, right? Which again, gives you the bandwidth to take additional stuff that will add value to your degree, right? We'll talk a little bit about this in a second when I get to my pie chart. Okay, two histories, two governments, math. I understand that comm folks are usually oriented towards the social, and so math is not necessarily one of the things that everybody loves, right? I get it, I'm a calm person too. Um, so the math that I encourage you all to take is Math 1580, Survey of Math. It's, it's the not statistics class, right? But if you were thinking about double majoring in psychology, you probably do want to take statistics. But ideally, Math 1580. And what we're gonna have you do is if you still have to take that, you're gonna knock it out your first semester, get it over with, and then you never have to look back, right? One math class, that's it, move on. Math 1580, right? And then you have two sciences that you have to take to meet the core requirements, right? So six hours of science. I want you to save your sciences for your COM 3010, the Intense Research and Writing class semester. Because ideally, that 3010 semester, I have you in, see this class right here, HMGT 2460, right? It's an online nutrition class. Got it? Everybody reading between the lines? Okay, excellent. And then uh, the other science class that I generally tend to recommend for comm majors is Geography 1710, Earth Science, Geology 1610, which is literally called Rock On, um, right, or another science. And the reason why is because COM 3010 is research and writing intensive, right? So you're going to be putting a lot of your effort into research and writing. And so I don't want you in any other research or, research or writing intensive classes that semester. And your sciences aren't, right? Especially HMGT 2460 and Geography 1710, right? I don't want you in any like political science classes or history classes or, or upper level sociology classes, right? That require a lot of writing. Keep your sciences in your back pocket to take that semester. It will help you out immensely, I promise, okay? So those are the sciences, right? Then you have this language, philosophy, and culture credit to take. Um, there's a ton of different classes you can take here, then comm majors tend to like a lot of them. Um, and we'll talk through which ones would be appropriate to you, given your interest, once you get there in your program. Okay, and then we're gonna move on to the class requirements, all right? So class, remember, is the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. So we talked about the core requirement, and then the class, the college, requires a separate set of core classes as well. So these are your communication and digital skills class, right? So there's a list that's coming, but just know that COM 3720, which you can take as your group A requirement, meets that requirement. And then this diversity and global issues requirement, COM 3620 or COM 4240, which meet other requirements in the COM uh, degree, you can take that to fulfill those requirements there. So again, you're double dipping, okay? And then last but certainly not least on this page is your foreign language or world language requirement. Um, the college does require this. Everybody in the college has to take it, regardless of major. And so here is my best advice I can give to you. This is the do as I say, not as I did <laughs> when I was here back in the cut um, thing. I want you to start your foreign language in the fall. Start it immediately and do not stop until it is done, right? So what that means is, say you were going to take, um, well, let me back up a little. In order to meet the college requirements, say if you were going to take French, you would need to take the French 2040 and French 2050, or French 3 and 4. 
But in order to take French three and four, you gotta take your test out of one and two, right? So most folks are looking at 12 hours of a language. There's a difference if it's, if it's Spanish that we'll get to in a second, right? And so when I say start first and don't stop till it's done, this is what I mean, right? So if your fall semester of your freshman year, if you were gonna take French, take French 10-10. Then your uh, sophomore, I'm sorry, your second semester of your freshman year, take French 2. And then at the very least, over the summer, at the very least, over the summer, take French 3, right? Ideally French 3 and 4 and knock it out. And here's why. Because what I don't like to happen is for you to leave the spring semester of your freshman year, you're home for the summer, and if you're not listening to a language and using it, if it's off your ears and off your tongue, you'll lose it, right? And then you have to come back four months later to a higher level class. But if you take that in the summer, you keep going on, right? And ideally, you knock it all out. So three and four in the summer would be great, right? This also allows you to take 12 hours your COM 3010 semester. Does that make sense? So if you get ahead of your classes in the summer, then that allows you the bandwidth to take a 12 hour semester in the fall instead of a 15 hour semester and you're still keeping on track to graduate, right? And so I know that may be a lot coming at you right now, but Nicole can totally stop and pause this and kind of walk through that logic again too. But what we're gonna do is take your foreign language starting in the fall and don't stop till it's done. Do not put it off till your senior year. It does not get easier, I promise you, right? If you've taken a foreign language in high school, the best I can, advice I can give you is take the language that you've already taken in high school. I don't care if you didn't like it. You know it, you're not coming in flying blind, right? And so, uh, also know too that everybody in their dog would like to take American Sign Language more than anything else and it's almost impossible to get into. Okay, <laughs> right? And so I know people who have put it off and they will put it off because they're trying to get into that first class and it's only, there's only a couple of slots and it's only offered in a very specific sequence and it ends up it's their senior year and they can't get in and now what are they gonna do, right? Don't do that. If you can't get in, if you really wanna take sign language and you can't get into it this fall, then you need to take it started in the summer at the very least, right? Also, most folks, if you're coming from Texas, have taken Spanish. You've had some sort of Spanish in high school. The upshot of taking Spanish is because you have taken something in high school, even if you don't test out of it, they have a class that's called Spanish 1030 that is kind of a hybrid of Spanish 1 and 2 put together. And so instead of 12 hours, you're looking at 9 hours of Spanish, right? So that means technically you could take Spanish 1030 in the fall, Spanish 2040 in the spring, Spanish 2050 in the summer, and you out, okay? Also, something to keep in mind with the foreign language is after you've taken these 12 hours, it's usually only two or three more upper level classes to get a minor in it, right? A minor in Spanish looks really good on a resume. And if you, and the, the classes that you take don't necessarily have to be the grammar classes. They can be language classes. They can be culture classes. This is an excellent opportunity for you to do a study abroad trip. You're only in college once. If there's any way you can do a study abroad, do it. It's a life-changing experience, and you can knock out easily six hours of upper-level credit over a summer, right, or, or in a, a study abroad class. So I highly encourage you to do that if you can, all right? So that's my spiel on foreign language. Start in the fall. Do not stop till you're done. Don't put it off. Everybody and their dog wants to take sign language, okay? Um, and so I have this little graphic up here because I want to show you how COM works towards maximizing the value of your degree, right? So in order to succeed, we have to start planning now. Okay, so in order for you to graduate, you have to have 120 hours total. Any way you slice it, you have to have 120 hours, okay? So of those 120 hours, 42 of them are designated towards the core. But remember, because COM double dips so much into your core, you automatically knock out 18 hours of your college and your university core just by being a COM major, right? And then that means functionally you only have 24 hours left here to complete your COM degree, okay? With your minor, that's an additional 18 hours, right? And there's lots of different ways to work this Tetris game. But at minimum, if you follow the plan that I have for you, you will have 36 hours 
left over after you've completed your core, your class core, your comm requirements, and your minor. You'll have 36 hours left over. You can very easily, most degree programs generally are 36 hours. You can double major. All right, and double major doesn't mean you have one degree with two majors. It means you have two degrees, right? So say you got a BA in Communication Studies and a BA in Media Arts, right? If you did this properly, you absolutely could. If you've got a lot of AP credit coming in, it can even get weirder here, right? Ideally, all of these 36 hours, we're going to encourage you to add towards another minor or a certificate or even a double major because we want to maximize the value of your degree. If you come out of here and, you know, four years and you got a BA in comm, say a BA in journalism and advertising and PR and a minor in Spanish, that's an impressive resume, right? And so really start to look at this because if we're strategic from the jump, it will pay off later, I promise, okay? And so I know that was a lot of information. Again, Nicole, if you need to pause it, pause it. But we just went through all of the comm degree requirements, all the minor requirements. We talked about the ways in which comm overlapped with your cores. And we talked about um, the sciences, holding on to that to your 3010 semester, and then talked about um, getting on top of your foreign language as soon as possible. Okay? We take a deep breath. You're fine. <laughs> I know it's a lot. I will be here for you all year, I promise. Okay, now we're going to move on to talking specifically about what's going to happen in the fall. Okay? So, scheduling for the fall. Um, one of the things that we've done is I like to keep a really kind of close eye on all of our first semester freshmen and so I like to know where you are and I've kind of looked through all the classes that you could potentially take and have ballparked what I want each one of your schedules to be. And so the first thing that will be cool is y'all are all going to be in COM 1010 uh, together. There's a super secret section called the COM 1010 Learning Community that your advisor, or, uh, Nicole or whoever is in here, they're going to add you to that this semester, right? It's Monday, Wednesday, I think from 10 to 10.50. And so you will all be in that class together. It will all be first time college students that are comm majors, which means you can start to build community. You get to know each other, right? And also, I know where you are. I can check on you, and we can have multiple folks who are available for you if you need help, right? We're here, do that. Um, other things your freshman year, ideally what I want you to have is a five day a week schedule that's sort of similar to high school, um, but not as similar because I think it's an easier transition. And so I want stuff spread out. I usually want you starting the day around like 9 o'clock and being done around like 3.30 or 4 and dividing up classes between Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Tuesday, Thursday, but having a light load on Friday if you need to like go home or do something, right? So for sure this semester, everybody will be in COM 1010. Right, the super secret learning community that your advisors will add you to as soon as you go to the computer lab. Then we're going to knock out Math 1580. I've picked several sections that I know have really good teachers. Um, you start your world language, come hell or high water, this fall. Okay, and then ideally I'll also have you in like your first history class and your first poli sci class and your first English class. And so we're going to move very strategically through the core requirements. Um, and I kind of and I pick classes so that you are also going to know some people in those big classes. So for example, um, the first poli sci class, poli sci 2305, you can be in a class with 500 students in it, right? That's a lot. That's overwhelming. It's totally overwhelming, right? It's overwhelming to teach. It's overwhelming to take. Um, and so if you've got like 10 of your peeps who are also in your comm class that are in your poli sci class, you have a community, right? You can study together. Everybody's on the same page. And so we've got lists of classes so that y'all will be taking stuff together so you don't ever feel alone or overwhelmed. That's the primary goal there. Um, okay. And so after your COM 1010 10 semester, we have a super secret class that you will all take together. That will be true as well in your sophomore, uh, I'm sorry, not your sophomore, your second semester. So COM 2020 in the spring, y'all will all take that together. So your cohort will kind of move through degree, the degree at the same pace, ideally. Uh, but of course, this is also something we can work around or talk about if you need to. Okay. Nicole's going to talk about brass tacks of exactly which classes you're going to take after I'm done talking, which is almost complete. <laughs> Last things, tips for success, strategies for success. Start now. The first thing I want to talk about is your GPA. Your GPA is your ticket to a lot of things, right? So maintaining a high GPA, that means 3.0 or higher, is really important. In order to be in good standing as a comm major, you at least need to have a 2.5, okay? But here's one with regards to GPA. I've been teaching in college for 18 years now. I can tell you nine times out of 10, 
an A student and a C student, the difference between them has almost nothing to do with brains and has everything to do with time management. Time management, time management, time management, time management. One of the hardest things for uh, freshmen or folks coming right into college is the difference between high school and college, right? So one of the major differences is in high school, you do the majority of your active learning in class with the teacher, right? And then the homework that you take home reinforces what you've learned in class. In college, it's flipped, right? It's usually the opposite. You have to do a lot of reading and work to get into class, to be prepared for the discussions, and then they go over basic information and the professor goes deeper or offers new information, right? And so you have to, have to, have to allocate time to prepare for class before you get there, okay? And here is the magic ratio. There is a magic number, I promise. For every one hour you are in class, you must allocate three hours outside of class to adequately prepare for that class and to do all the work outside of it, right? It's that one to three ratio. So this is what that means functionally, right? If you are in 15 hours of classes, that means 15 hours of your week is already dedicated. That time is gone. You are in class in those times. You have to allocate 45 hours outside of those 15 hours to adequately prepare for everything you have to do inside of those 50 hours. Which means from the jump, 60 hours of your week is already taken up, right? It's already covered. If for you to have a good GPA, right, for you to maintain stuff, for you to, to do everything you need to do, that's already been covered. And so the reason I say this is because I want you to make informed decisions about how you spend your time. College is expensive, trust me, I know. My student loan debt is ridiculous, right? And I understand that a lot of times you gotta work. It is not reasonable. It is not reasonable, it is not reasonable to work more than 20 hours a week and take a full load of classes, right? There are literally not enough hours in the day. And so if that's what you have to do, I totally get it. Most of us here have to do that too. I would much rather us very strategically plan to take maybe 12 hours and pick some stuff up in the summer or extend it a little bit. Maybe, maybe you take four and a half years, whatever, right? Because I want you to maintain your GPA like it's your credit score, right? If you are trying to bust your butt and work full time and take 15 hours, it's really not workable. It's, it, is a, it is a recipe for disaster. I've seen very few people who can actually do it, and the people who actually can do it are usually moms who are coming back to college in their 40s, or, and they just are magical people. They give time turners. I don't know how they do it, right? So I really want you to manage your time because there's a direct correlation between time management and GPA, and GPA is your ticket to a lot of things, okay? So 3.0 or higher. Other big tip for success that I want you to start planning right now is an internship, right? An internship, do an internship, do an internship, do an internship. Um, what moves your resume to the tops of piles is not necessarily what's on the resume, but who hands the resume to somebody else, who puts it at the top of the pile, right? And so you need to start thinking about networking now. The people in this room are nodes on a network that can help you get someplace else, right? Your professors help you network. Being involved in student organizations that we're going to talk about help you network. But more than anything, internships help you network. And ideally, we have you plan towards a paid internship. That would be better than an unpaid internship, right? Um, but if you have a high GPA and if you've taken at least 12 hours in comm, you can also get course credit for an internship, right? So that's what... I want everybody to strive for is getting course credit for an internship your junior year. Even if you don't get course credit, if the GPA isn't there for some reason, still do an internship, do an internship, do an internship, do an internship. And then tip number three is jump in. College is cool. It's really fun. But um, it's also a lot of work and you're doing a lot of changing in the course of these four years. And UNT is an amazing community, but it's also really big. There are 37,000 students on the UNT campus, which means it's the third largest university in the state of Texas. It's really easy to get lost if you let yourself. It is so tempting to stay in your dorm room and get under the covers and watch Netflix for hours on end. I get it. But reach out, jump in, find community. You'll have a community inside of COM, right? You'll have the cohort that you're here with. You really do get to know folks um, in the COM major. There's several different organizations you can get involved with in COM that I'm going to talk about in a second. But find your tribe, right? Find out what you like and find organizations and folks who do that and go meet them. Um, inside of communication studies, last page, I promise. 
There are uh, four organizations that you can get in, uh, involved with, right? Um, and what research shows us is students who are involved in student organizations, number one, tend to have higher GPAs because they are forced to manage their time better. Number two, they tend to be happier because they have social support and they're around people that are interested in the same thing. And number three, they tend to get jobs quicker because this type of stuff, again, is networking par excellence. So first thing I want you to think about getting involved in is Lambda Pi Eta. That's the National Communication Association Honor Society. And so if you're a junior and you have a 3.0 overall and a 325 in the major, you automatically qualify to be a member of Lambda Pi Eta. Um, and so this is looks really great on a resume. You get cords when you graduate. It's also sort of a lifetime appointment to this honor society. And so it, uh, it just opens up a lot of networking opportunities. Um, so everybody shoot for Lambda Pi Eta. It's really cool and fun. They also tend to be the leaders in the department, and so they'll do lots of mentorship um, activities, and they'll work with professors on their research. So this is the one that everybody should shoot for, for sure. The next organization here is Communication Future Professionals. This is our professionalization organization. And so we bring in folks who have degrees from this university, from this department, who are out in the world making some bank, paying some mortgages, and are generally doing really well in their careers. And they come back and they talk to our undergrads and they say, this is exactly what I'm using my degree for. This is what I wish I would have learned. It's also a great space to network. We do interviewing workshops. We do resume building workshops. This is the get a job and get connected organization, right? Communication Future Professionals. Next group is the Performance Interest Group, affectionately known as the PIGS. And so if you are oriented towards the performance end of things at all, you definitely want to be a part of this. We put up several showcases this semester. We also travel to multiple performance festivals across the country. And then last but certainly not least is our world-renowned debate team. Um, and so if you've done debate in high school at all, or if you're interested in going to law school, definitely think about joining the debate team. You get to travel over the country, compete in multiple areas. Um, and again, it's a really great thing on a resume. And so I think I've gone through my five points. I know this is a lot of information. I will see you all multiple times throughout the semester. Um, and, and what you're going to do right now is Nicole is going to help you plan out exactly what you're going to take in the fall, right? We're going to give you the classes, the section numbers. We've picked out people who are really good professors and at really good time slots because we want to make sure that you succeed and do well. And so I know this is a lot of information. And I know I tend to talk quickly, but I promise we'll go over it again. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you at the first flight at the, right before school starts. We'll have like two hours to hang out together. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.